Devontae, welcome to the World XP Podcast. This is episode number 22. So a pleasure to have you on. I think we crossed paths once or twice through uh, some mutual friends like Frank and some of his photography and videography stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And you got my radar, I think, with Hokage was, was one of the first, and Gold, a couple oh, yeah. years ago, back in the day, mm-hmm. were, were some of the first songs that I saw you release. And your last release, um, Like Uzi, is on Spotify, correct? Yes, sir. All oh, platforms. All platforms. So go check him out there. Um, but how did you get into this whole music thing? Because I know a lot of people, like we had Young Dino on the podcast a couple months ago and, and some other people, and everybody seems to have sort of a different inspiration or a different path for how they got into the, the musical side of things. Because I, I also know a lot of people say like, oh, I wish I could do this on the side, but to actually make the jump and like, like you did, you're in a transition period in your life. You just moved to LA. Congratulations, mm-hmm. good sir. Um, thank you, thank you. But that's that's a big jump, and I that's so. What sort of made you? So I guess there's like three questions in, in this. So what sort of made you get into the music thing, and then what made you take take the jump, the leap of faith to to move out to LA and try and do this as a career? So um, I started music when I was like 16, and it was it was kind of like uh, it wasn't like oh, I'm gonna start making music. It was just. I was in high school and I had gotten detention and I was just in detention. They said, you couldn't talk. So I was like, all right, well then I'm gonna write, you know, just being hard headed. And then like, I started writing and like, I was right. And I would write like raps like on paper. And then I would pass it to my friend and he would write a line and he passed it back to me and I would write a line. And then we started doing that to where like, it just got out of hand to the point where we were writing raps on paper. And then we would like pass them around school and then people would like read our raps and stuff. Um, and then I was doing, I was just writing for a very long time. And then after writing for so long, you're like, all right, well, let me try maybe, you know, putting some of this down on on a beat. So then I started, uh, I bought, you know, the equipment, like the cheapest stuff I could find and then started recording. And of course it was terrible, but I just never gave up. And then, and doing so you get better and better over time. It's just, it really is just one of those practice makes perfect type of things. Uh, eventually I got to a point where like I'm super confident in my music so when opportunities like this to move to LA present itself um, I didn't waver at the idea like it was it was a no-brainer for me to be like okay this is is there's more hope for me here than there is for me here so why would I even hesitate to to make the decision to move there you know what I mean so as soon as they told me it was a possibility I said okay say less Put in my my um my notice at my job, uh, gave up my uh, spot on my lease in my apartment, left my car, uh, left my girl. I'd left everything and just went. How's it been so far? Here. How's it been so far? You've been out there for a couple of weeks now, a week or two. Uh, this is like I'm on my second week now. Um, at first it was like you know the time differences it would throw you off a little bit, but. Mm-hmm. And like just being in a whole different area and just finding like a, it's like a new home. So it takes a little bit to get used to. So, and, and being here at first, I was like, kind of like just off for a few days, but then I started getting myself in a routine. Like right now, like I'm at the park. I, I wake up every morning around seven, in between seven or eight. And then I go to the park and I go for, I walk a little bit and I run. And then I go back home, I eat breakfast. And then I just, Take, and I take a shower and then I just start making music and it's music for the rest of the day, every day. That's my routine. So it's like, once I got my routine going, it, it got me at a point where like, I'm in a better headspace to be more, um, more creative. Yeah, hundred percent. I know people in all sorts of in, like industries or walks of life, the routine, being able to not worry about sort of like the monotonous day-to-day things like you like you've got it down it gives you the, the headspace like you were saying to really put in the effort and time into your craft exactly. whether it be music or athletics or like mm-hmm. whatever writing whatever the industry or, or your craft is it gives you the time and stuff to do that what sort of exactly. things when you're making so like you like you go through your routine in the morning you go back to your to your place and you're making music does it depend on the day like some some days you're writing other days you're recording some days you're looking at different beats that you that you like like does it vary from day to day or you got like a routine Uh, with that as well that's a good question so um i actually make my beats too so 
part of my routine is to make the beat and then make the song. But in making a beat, not every beat is going to hit. Not every beat is going to be something that, like, I actually like. Like, sometimes you make stuff that you don't really feel. So then I just have to make beats until I find something that I like. The same thing as, you know, like, people... When they're looking through beats, they go through, most of them just go on YouTube and just click through until they find something they like, which is easy. You can do that in like 10 minutes. But me, I have to make every beat before I decide if I really like it or not. So I have to go, it takes me probably like an hour to make a beat. So I make a beat, maybe like it, maybe not. If not, I move on. But right now I've been working more on getting just a bunch of beats that I do like or that are, you know, decent enough for me to write to. And then I'm gonna, um, and then I'm gonna start the writing process afterwards, so that way it's easier for me to just click through the beats, you know, like like someone would do on YouTube, and find mm-hmm. one that I'm feeling that day, and then if I'm feeling it that day, cause you know, every day you feel different. Like I don't know, if you wake up in in the morning, sometimes when you speak, your um, your voice has a different feeling to it. It's not always the same. Like today, mm-hmm. like my voice, my voice isn't bad today. Like I feel like I might record. But some days like, my voice is just better than other days. So like when it's better, then I might I might decide to record as opposed to making a beat. Gotcha. But it also brings out a different feeling in me. Like if my voice has more conviction in it, it's gonna bring out a different feeling for me and it's gonna make me want to rap. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah, I do notice that obviously I'm not I don't use vocals in my or like in my day-to-day life like you do, but I have noticed that before. Do you have um, songs that you sort of, like when like when you got your beats that you've made, do you write afterwards or sometimes do you get an idea and you write first and then you kind of figure out like, oh, maybe this, maybe I need to make this sort of beat to go with what I've written. And then sometimes on top of that, do you say like, oh, I need maybe this, sort of voice, tone of voice, like you were saying, more maybe more conviction or different pitches. Does does all that go into it or you kind of just go go with the flow and what you're feeling that day works works itself out? Yeah. I mean I know people do write songs, like they just write songs and then they make beats to them. But me personally, I like to find a beat and or do the beat and then start writing a song just because like I like to flow with the beat. If you write a song and you try to put it to the beat, it doesn't always like hit the way that it could. Mm-hmm. There have been times though where I'll write a hook, like I'll write a hook, and then like I'll make a beat to the hook. But that's um, but that's easier because it's just uh, you're you're taking a melody like a hook has a melody, so you're mm-hmm. taking that melody from the the hook that you write and putting it to the beat. But if you're like if you actually write verses, like and beats, there's different pockets. So if you write a verse and you don't know where the pockets are gonna be, you can't You can't really, for me personally, I can't really put words to a beat that I already, that, that I haven't already heard. What do you mean by pocket? So like, um, it's kind of like the groove, like when you listen to a beat and you hear somebody rap on it, like there's, different grooves to different beats to where like you could sit inside of like a little like pocket in a sense or like a little like space in the beat to where it flows so nicely and it's just like right on like some people will rap over a snare some people will rap me personally I I like to rap I'm more like a boom bap rapper so I like to hit when a snare hits Mm -hmm. so it's like that's my typical pocket but you, you get artists like Lil Baby who ride a beat way different than Drake would ride a beat. You know what I mean? Or yeah. like the, different than J. Cole would ride a beat. So like they're, they rap typically in different types of pockets. So you can, you can kind of get a sense when you think about how J. Cole's music sounds. And then like when he rides a beat and how it hits and it's punctual. And then you think about how like Lil Baby or like Gunna or like Young Thug, like they're more melodic. So they kind of like like rise smooth over the beat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got the beat kind of carries them in a sense. Yeah. So it's a different pocket. Definitely. That's why they all have their own unique sort of styles. And that's a big part of that, I guess. How did you, exactly. how did you figure out yours? 
was it just trial and error or was it something that you all like have oh you yeah always known that you sort of like wanted to hit on on the snare like you were saying or like it's how, definitely how did you find definitely that? trial and error definitely mm -hmm. trial and error like without a doubt like all all of all of this is trial and error like nobody's gonna be able to just know exactly what it is and what they're gonna do and how it's gonna be when they when they're starting like you have to try different things and you're gonna fail but you have to keep trying until something works for you and like that's how you find your own sound because you're not gonna know your sound until you develop your sound so and the only way to develop your sound is through trial and error so I've tried so many different things and like the things that just felt the most comfortable for me is is you know like sitting in that type of boom bap like really rap like spitting bars and like telling stories type of pocket mm -hmm. personally yeah everybody is different if you go listen to young dinos it's a whole di his his flow and where he hit he didn't use the word pocket specifically but the way he talked about it was a whole different a whole different thing from you that's not good nor bad it's just it just is yeah. everybody everybody's different that's yeah, for you, sure. You have a, personally, at least when I listen, you have a very distinct style. Like I remember, I think you got one of your, um, do you get one of your songs on the radio at one point? There was like some contest a couple years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and, um, me and Jane were yeah. on, what was it? We've been on multiple radios though. Like It was like the first one though. You guys had a, I think you, it, you guys had like I a think big it, Instagram campaign, like, comment on that the radio stations post and all sorts yeah it was um, i think it was um 93.9 yeah i think so but i remember hearing it um like i wasn't really paying attention i just had it on because like mm -hmm. like you guys says hey let's like listen to the radio at this time and i wasn't really paying attention and like the song mm -hmm. your song popped on and i was like oh that's Devonte. like you have a very distinct sound it's oh like, yeah that mm, i haven't well, again, I don't listen to a ton of like hip hop or rap mm -hmm. music that much, but um, from what I've heard, it's like you have a very distinct sort of sound. That oh yeah, most definitely because I look, I I, I found that um, my voice is way, way higher pitch and pitch than a lot of people who mm -hmm. try to rap. So it gives me a curve to be able to use it to my advantage, and like it would be impossible for me to try to, you know, like mimic somebody else because there hasn't, in my opinion, I, I haven't heard anybody else with like such a high pitched voice as mine that, and rap the way that I rap. So mm -hmm. when you hear my voice on a song, you know instantly that it's me. That's if you know who I am. But if you don't know who I am, you're gonna be like, who the hell is that? Yeah, no, it's good though. It's good that you have that your, your sounds like, Mm -hmm. it, did it make it difficult when you were first starting? Because I know when like people get first started into a business or an industry, they look for somebody that they, that they can emulate. Was that difficult for you not having that that person um, that sort of had a similar style to you when you first got started? Uh, well, yes, because yes and no, because I knew like the type of feeling that I was going for with my music. So I had people who had similar feelings. Um, but when it came to like finding the same type of structure, like someone who structures music the same way I structure music or the voice that way, the way that I use my voice, it was so hard because I didn't, most people look, like you said, they look for somebody to like, that has similarities to them so that they know that they're on the right track. Mm -hmm. But me, I, I didn't have anybody who did the things that I do like, or like had the same type of um, flow that I have. So it was kind of hard for me to know if I was on the right track until I started releasing music and had, you know, like the audience tell me, oh, yeah, you're on the right track. But it took a long time for me to build like the confidence with my voice because I was so insecure about it just because it wasn't like other people's. But once I got comfortable with it and I learned how to use it to my advantage, then like it, everything after that just came super easy, super natural. Mm -hmm. Was it insecurity from like hearing yourself for the first time recorded or was it just from the pitch or what was it from? Because I know like myself, was, hearing my, like doing the podcast for the first time, 
Mm -hmm. and obviously you've heard your like you hear your own voice recorded like if you have to do a school project or something like that but like the podcast yeah. for the first time first couple episodes listening back to it was like horrible i was like oh i sound gross and then you kind of so crazy get, yeah and then you kind of just get used to it afterwards was it yeah. a similar situation for you um i think yes but it took a it was a long time it wasn't like a few it wasn't like a few songs it was like a few years really like where I was making music and it just didn't sound right to me because it didn't sound like other people's mm -hmm. and then it took a long time for me to get comfortable and be like you know this is me this is what mine sounds like this is who I am and I can't change it and mm -hmm. it's, it's it's not going it's going to get better but it's not going to get better in a sense that like it's going to get better to be like theirs it's going to get better to be like i found me mm -hmm. and that's and that's what i did like i started the way that i i rap on the song is like i don't know it's it's different like i found, started finding just like ways to fluctuate my voice that like it's hard it's hard to describe without you know like hearing it mm -hmm. Like people, when they're listening to this, they're probably gonna be like, what in the heck? Like, what does he sound like? And then when you listen, you're gonna be like, okay, I get it. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's it's, it's noticeable when you listen. That's what kind of what I was saying before when, when the song popped on the radio. It was very noticeable. Yeah. Was it? I forget, oh, Late Night. That was Late Night. Yeah, yeah, that's the one it was. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, it was like when you were first sort of like breaking into or trying to make Oh, yeah, it happen. definitely was was it what made you keep going when like you said it took a couple of years for you to get more secure in your sound and your voice what what made you keep going through through those couple of years because that's a long time to sort of like battle with that um it's like when you love something you fight for it same you know just like a relationship if you love somebody and you want to be with somebody you're gonna fight for it, mm -hmm. and you're gonna work work through things to make it happen. This I looked I looked at music the same way. Like I love music, and like I want it. I want it. So like I fought through all the insecurities, all the problems I had, like all the ups and downs, like the things that are going around, uh, going on around me in life that are like making it hard for me. Like I fought through everything just to make it work, and so far so good. Yeah, for sure. It's insecurities within yourself everybody has their own insecurities for sure mm -hmm. but to be able to fight fight through that especially if you love something like you mentioned that makes yeah. it i feel like it makes it more worth it when you start seeing that success is that is that a fair statement you think for you as well and you said what was the last part I couldn't hear you. like it makes the success when you find some success it makes it more worth it like once you fight oh yeah that definitely and stuff Listen, when I get to where, I mean, I'll never get to where I'm going because I'm always going to want to do better. But when I get to where I know I'm in a good place and like I can I can live off of my music and like I know like people are appreciating it and I'm getting like the kind of recognition, recognition that I feel like I deserve, it will probably bring tears to my eyes, honestly, simply because like I know everything that I've been through and everything that I've done to get to the point that I'm at. And like, it's been a long ways and a lot of work, bro. Like this is, that's the thing. Like people don't understand that you can be as talented as you want to be and you can have all the God given talent that you want. But if you don't have work ethic, you'll never win. Like there's people who are, you, there's people who listen to music and they're like, oh my gosh, this person is trash. I'm better than them, better than them. Why am I not there? And then. You just have to sit back and think, you know, that person worked way harder than you. That's mm -hmm. why they're there and that's why you're not. So that's that's it for me right now. It's just finding that that work ethic and executing. So that way when I get to where I'm going, I'm gonna look back and I say, I did all of this and it was all worth it. And it's gonna it I know it will like literally bring tears to my eyes. Cause I've had moments before where I like was like, dang, like. I really did that, you know? Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. It's like that, and at least I'm more familiar with soccer, but it's the same thing. There's so many talented guys that just don't make it to the next level. 
and it's yeah, they just, usually either work ethic or attitude or something. Not always, obviously. There's um, like injuries and like other coaches that didn't oh, yeah. give you a chance if you should have got, et cetera, et cetera. But more, more often than not, it's, it's work ethic. There are guys that I know that like you look back, like travel to like club mm-hmm. days, and you're like, oh, he wasn't that good. How did he make it to whatever? It's always he's put in the work for years and years and years and years. Exactly. And it pays off. Um, when you first performed live, how describe the sort of feelings leading up leading up to that, like leading up to going out on stage? Are you are you are you naturally sort of comfortable in that sort of area of like public? Well, it's not really public speaking, but are you naturally sort of comfortable in that area, or sort of just describe like what you felt leading up to that to that uh-huh. performance, and then what you felt during and then after? I definitely am super comfortable with it. Like, so it was just. It was easy, but it was weird because my first performance wasn't like as like official as you would think it is. So like it was a party, but it was like a big party and it was like outside and they had a garage and the garage had like a bunch of speakers in it. So I was performing out of somebody's garage at a party and like leading up to it, I was just, I was just excited because like I had never done it before and I knew it was going to be a lot of fun. I was going to have friends around me you know, people that were going to make it exciting. And when I did it, it was, it was almost, you know, effortless. Cause when, when coming into this type of industry, it's more than just perfecting like the sound of the music you have to study. You really need to study different things like, like how to give an interview or how to properly conduct yourself on social media or when you're in public or like I've watched people perform hundreds of times. Like I've watched hour long videos of people's full concerts, just watching like, okay, what type of cadence? How do they interact with the crowd? Like, are, are they on this side of the stage, that side of the stage? Like, what do they do? Like, how do they use their voice? Do they rap every word or do they give it breaks? You know what I'm saying? Like I I literally studied. So when it was time for me to go, like it was like studying for a test and studying soup as the best you could ever study with flash cars and everything you know like Mm -hmm. i was just i was just super prepared for it and like i don't really get nervous i don't know i've never been the type of person to get nervous for things like even when i did the national in um, richmond in front of like thousands of people i wasn't even slightly nervous like it was just like okay this is this is work like it all just feels like this is a part of part of the the plan so there's nothing to be nervous about that's a gift you know to not be nervous before going on stage like that tons yeah, of people it is. there's tons of people that myself included like it's a learned i'm not the most comfortable doing it it's a learned skill for me um i'm comfortable more comfortable now but especially to be able to go on like in front of like the national enrichment it's like so when so when you get on stage, is it you kind of do you have a set already lined up and then like you kind of know what you're gonna like what songs you're gonna do or does yeah. it depend on the crowd or like like so time or you what? Plan. You plan like so like typically it depends on the type of event or like the venue, but if you have like a longer time slot, then you know you'll plan out how um how the songs are going to flow and like what type of mood you want to set. But then you think about like the venue and who you're performing for, because you want to be able to entertain your crowd. That's the whole goal. So like if let's say like I'm in a club, of course, I'm going to do a bunch of songs that are like hitting like for the radio. Mm -hmm. But if I'm doing like a venue where people are there to hear music, I'm going to do like my slower stuff where it's like I'm actually rapping and it's like it's intriguing to people to see somebody, you know, who can like rap and tell a story and like also like do it and entertaining like in front of them. So it just depends, you know, like you got to know what type of crowd you're going into, what type of venue you're at and, and um, how you want to portray yourself. That's pretty much it. But once you get that, then you, it, your sound, your song selection is, is, is almost like evident what songs you're going to pick. 
Yeah. How is how are you with sort of like crowd work uh, as far as like no obviously it's a little bit different with like comedy but I've heard a lot, lots of comedians talk recently about being rusty with crowd work because of COVID and they haven't been able to go in person well, and, and perform and so I, obviously it's different but when you are sort of do you make on the fly decisions as far as like when to like I've been to concerts where they won't sing the hook and they'll like hold the microphone out to the crowd or like do stuff like that do you do stuff like that and like you make those decisions oh, yeah, on definitely. the fly and stuff like that yeah definitely like you can't I plan a lot of stuff like if I'm if I have a song like I know where like people know these lines or like they like this line so like I'll I'll plan like that but there's gonna be times where like you can't plan everything and you don't know exactly what is how the crowds are gonna react or how the crowd's gonna be so once you start noticing then like you react to it like I've had times where I've seen somebody you know, doing my whole verse and I'm, I literally stopped and like hopped off the stage and gave them the microphone. Like I didn't plan doing that, but mm -hmm. like, you know, like you just kind of go with the flow and you just got to remember like to be entertaining. So people like to see things like that. It's entertaining to them. But most of the time I plan like knowing how my songs are and knowing what people like, but cause it's good to, it's good to have a structure of things to know like you know have like a basis to where you can go off of but it's also good to be able to improvise and be able to read the room when you're actually doing it because you can plan as much as you want for how the room to is going to react sometimes they just don't not the way you want them to so it's important to be able to be quick on your feet to know like okay this isn't working let me try this mm. you have I had two thoughts that, that came when you were when you were talking about that. You have a favorite mm -hmm. sort of improv like improvisation moments, and the, like a, the, other, the other question would be how have you had times when the crowd has not reacted that you like how you would have liked them to, and then what's what sort of process do you go through mentally? Obviously, it's super quick. You got to make quick decisions, but what sort of process mm -hmm. do you go through to sort of let me try this other thing? So the first question is kind of like. When you're talking about you gave that guy the mic, do you have a favorite sort of improv moment where you like jumped off the stage and like you did that or that sort of yeah, thing? Yeah, that's 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 probably my favorite. Like, well, my favorite is jumping off of the stage or getting into the crowd. Like, my favorite thing to do is to I like the energy. Like, this is gonna probably answer the first and the second question. So for, for me, for me, I like you feed off of the energy of the crowd. So. When the crowd is not really given the energy, then like you, but you have to remember the crowd also feeds off of your energy. Mm -hmm. So when a crowd's not given energy, you have to bring energy to the crowd in order to try to make them come to life. So one of my favorite things to do in order to do that is to get into the crowd. Like people, sometimes like if you're opening for another artist, like let's say I've opened for, um, other artists like uh, Trey Songs and A Boogie, like people like bigger artists who aren't necessarily the same, have the same demographic of music that I do, but like it doesn't take away from the possibility that there's somebody who might relate to my music. So I take the opportunities. But when I open for them, they're not necessarily there to see me, they're there to see somebody else. So they're not gonna always pay attention to me. But when you get down in front of them and you're right in front of them and you're showing them I'm here, then they they open their eyes and then they open their ears and it gives you a chance to to make a new fan or or get more engagement so one of my favorite improv moments is definitely getting down in the crowd and getting down gritty with the people and whenever the crowd is dead i bring them to life that's all you can do even if they even if they don't come to life you still got to keep the life because people are going to feed off your energy you rather i rather have a performance where i was energetic and i gave a good performance and people were just like, okay, well, he's there, but he did have a good performance. I wasn't really paying attention, but it was a good performance. Then for me to just have like, oh, they're dead, so I'm gonna be dead type of performance. And I just sit there and kind of like, oh, no, no, no. And then they're gonna be like, well, that was whack. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, that probably that's leaves typically you with a, how. a bad feeling if you were to actually go through with like, oh, they're dead, so I'm gonna be dead. Probably leaves you with yeah. a bad feeling afterwards. Do you? Yeah, most definitely. Do you enjoy? opening from the standpoint of 
do you get sort of like a competitive, maybe competitive is not the right word, but sort of like a, I know they're not here to see me. I have no pressure, but let me make these people like know that I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. Like it's, um, it's enjoyable to, to have the opportunity and just to perform in general, but to know that like I'm winning people over with like just the talent in general is a good feeling. It's, it's nice knowing that if I made, a if I gained a fan, it wasn't because of the fact that I'm just here. It's because of the fact that like, they actually appreciate what I have going on and who I am and what, I, what I'm doing. For sure. Mm. It's been a long journey for you so far. Oh, one, one other thing I wanted to ask you about. I noticed this on like um, some of your Instagram stories or whatever, but you have a lot of fans from South Africa yeah how how did that sort of come to be did, did you go there and perform or no so i um i promote a lot of my content on instagram to, to you know saying bigger engagement is how, how you grow your fan base so mm -hmm. like you got to market yourself so i actually make like i shoot like short commercials in a sense you know that i advertise on instagram in order to get bigger engagement to bring people into my music mm -hmm. um and when in doing so i typically tend to shoot for overseas areas because of the fact that they engage better and you you grow with a real authentic um audience so in, in doing that i guess like south africa just really took to my music and like it kind of just went crazy like a, a ridiculous amount of people from south africa really like clinged on to my music and and were reaching out to me and my dms were just crazy but I don't know why South Africa, there's other people, you know, like other areas too, like mm -hmm. where I have a, a nice little fan base, like in Austria, I also do too. And then um, in the UK, I also do. But South Africa is just, there's nobody that even compares to how much they, they show love. Yeah, it's been a while. I remember, hmm, I don't know, it was a year ago. I think you were like, oh, where, like, where are my fans from or whatever? Mm -hmm. and it was just like south africa south africa south africa south africa. yeah because like I'm, on instagram i don't like having a little red circle so i just like click through unless it's like yeah. somebody that i actually like know yeah and i just remember seeing south africa like so met so often and i was like yeah it's, oh, crazy. it's so weird it's like why why there I, I went there i was there for three weeks um oh, really yeah like two or three years ago it's a really That's cool crazy. place. It's a really cool place. If you get the opportunity to go and perform, you definitely should. Oh yeah, um, they want me to come, but I I just ain't rich enough yet to to, to <laughs> make sure. it there. Yeah, definitely. It's a it's a long place, like a sixteen hour flight from from DC. Oh wow. So, yeah, it's it's a it's definitely a hike, but it's definitely worth it. The people are really nice. Um, so definitely, if you get the opportunity to go perform there, you should. Um, yeah, absolutely. I would love to. Also, something oh, happened to you recently where you reached a new level of fame and that somebody faked your death. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> so yeah. what sort of happened there? Also, congratulations on that new level of fame. I feel like there's sort of levels. It's like somebody yeah. fakes your death, like somebody pretends to be you, somebody, yeah. I don't even know what the other level would be. So, But what kind of happened with that? So, all right, it's crazy because I think somebody was pretending to be me. Like, I'm not very active on Facebook. So I have a Facebook account, of course, but, like, I'm not very active on it. So mm -hmm. somebody, I guess, took, a, took advantage of that and, you know, like, started using my pictures and, like, my posts and, like, created a whole account. It's been actually multiple. Like, I've, they've made multiple accounts. I don't know if it's the same person or different people because there's also someone on Instagram, too. I, just, I don't know who it is. I think I have, like, an idea. Of who it could be but i'm not 100 percent sure like it's one it's one of the south africans though i can tell you that Cause, <laughs> yeah because like i think it's something they reached out to me and asked me hey can i make a fan account of you like an actual like fan account and i was like yeah sure that's fine but i feel like they had already started that same person because i've seen another account that was using my pictures before mm -hmm. and like the name the name of the account was so similar to the name of the account that reached out to me that it made me say like, all right, this is obviously the same person. So, but um, I don't know who it is on Facebook. I don't know if it's that same person or what, but they've been pretending to be me for some time. And like my parents are the first ones who noticed it. And then they call me about it. 
and then I seen it and I just, you know, like, it's just part of, you know, what happens. So I was just like, ha, 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 it's funny. Like the stuff that they're saying, like they said, I went to Harvard and like, I work at Pornhub and like crazy stuff. <laughs> and, and, and like their posts were so funny. And I just, you know, laughed about it. Like I would actually, I actually commented on a few of their posts, but then like, once they seen that, like I had noticed it, they blocked me, of course, so I couldn't see it. <laughs> But I've taken like a hiatus on Instagram, you know, like in this whole transition period, mm -hmm. I haven't really been active because I've been like working like behind the scenes, like heavy. So, um, and, and that being, I haven't been posting as much. So I think that them pretending to be me, they were running out of content to use to pretend to be me. So it got to a point where like, like, damn, I don't have anything else to post. I'm gonna have to kill the character off. So I, I think what they did was like dang like all right i guess it's over i'm gonna have to kill the character off so then they literally said i was dead i guess i i never actually seen the post myself somebody had to screenshot it and send stuff to me because like i said i was blocked but all the stuff that i seen was like people like commenting and like oh my gosh i can't believe you're gone like um i miss you so much i'm like i think this person was you know building like a whole like actual life off of my name and my pictures which is crazy because like it was multiple people and I've actually had people DM me in the past about it too, like saying, hey, is this you on Facebook? This person's been talking to me. And like, it got to a point where they were actually, you know, like very inappropriate. And I was trying to get people to report it, but there wasn't much I could do. But yeah. luckily, like with patients, you know, they just killed themselves off. But I had a friend call me. I didn't even know. Like, I had a friend call me and he called me and he was like, oh my God, thank God you're alive. Oh my gosh, I thought you was dead. I'm like, bro. I mean, we maybe haven't talked in like a few weeks, but I mean, like I'm alive. Like, what you mean? Like, it hasn't been that long. And he's like, no, they said you died. Like, they said you're dead. Like, people on Facebook, yada yada yada. I'm like, oh, what? Because like, I guess people were reaching out to him about me because, like, um, in my bio, I have him as like my manager. Mm -hmm. So people were reaching out to him about me to see like if I was okay. And then he was like, like what? So he called me, and I'm just in bed, cool and chilling. It was like a Sunday morning or something. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah that's it, it was it was crazy. Yeah, I just laugh about you know like this is the type of stuff that's gonna happen. So mm -hmm. like you like another thing you know like I said you study you have to know that this stuff is gonna happen. You have to know how to handle it. You just you just gotta let it be. Rumors mm -hmm. are gonna be the rumors. You know what's really going on. Only time you gotta address it is if it gets too out of hand. So when it, people said I did, I was dead. I just had to be like you know I'm not dead. Yeah, that's simple. That's good. I mean, that's a good way to handle it, though. Just like kind of don't let it get out of hand, but just laugh it off. It's, I feel like if you worry about that stuff too much, then it gets in the way of your craft. Yeah, for sure. Like you can absolutely cannot. Like if I had to give advice to people, like you absolutely cannot at, uh, under all circumstances let anything that anybody says get under your skin or bother you in any type of way to make you move differently. Like you cannot, you just have to remain you and stay consistent to you. 100%. And just, it's, it's, all, it's all about tunnel vision. Yeah, you gotta have a circle around you that you trust. Exactly. And, you know, and lean on them for advice and for help. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, if they're really looking out for you, then they'll be able, they'll be the first ones to tell you, hey, you messed this up. Hey, you messed that up. Hey, adjust this or adjust that. Absolutely. And that's why you gotta keep that circle tight and you gotta trust them because that's what they're there yep. for, for sure. Absolutely, 100%. You don't spend too much time in the YouTube comments. Yeah, bro, you can't. <laughs> I mean, I still be, I, on YouTube, I look because there's not as many comments. That's but true. like on, on Instagram, like, oh my God. <laughs> bro, like the stuff that people say in comments, like usually I get, I get nothing but love. But mm -hmm. sometimes there's people, you know, just trolling just to be, just to be annoying. And I just laugh, bro. Like I've, I'll actually go underneath there and like see the troll comments and then like I'll pin them to the top because I think it's so funny. <laughs> like one of them was like somebody said um, that I sound like Michael Jackson. I thought that was so funny. So I had to pin that one. And then like uh, another one of them was like uh, quit making music and get a job or something like that. And then I, I had to, but it's just like funny stuff like where I'm just like, all right, y'all y'all are crazy. But you know, like any attention is good attention. Usually. Usually, yeah. Yeah. Did you have any sort of musical background before you started writing? Like, 
any sort of like chorus band absolutely. like you know how to read music or anything nope absolutely not i had to teach myself everything everything that i know today i taught myself from start to finish like i taught myself how to record i taught myself how to properly um speak into a microphone how mm -hmm. to um work all the software that's the hardest part is figuring out all the software because you know and making beats i use one software um which is logic pro and then in recording my vocals i use another software which is pro tools so i had to learn two completely different softwares in order to uh be able to maneuver through through music but even in still learning the software you got to know you got to know what you want to put in the software so it's like i had to teach myself like chord progressions and like understanding music theory and then how to like properly breathe when you're rapping and like how to speak when you speak with conviction in the microphone you know mm -hmm. like i had to teach myself everything start to finish i want to do it any other way though yeah it makes, it makes it music, worth it. music theory is something that's like super interesting to me i was like uh, i was in band like middle school all the way through high school so i have the background in like I know how to read music and like different sorts of music um, yeah. and all that. And it's always interesting to me to listen to music and be able to like know what time it's in or mm -hmm. like just know when, like you just get sort of this instinctual feeling like, oh, the beat's probably gonna drop here or like- Oh yeah, definitely. Or, or this or that. And, I know for like dubstep and stuff where it's super obvious, it's like, oh, obviously the beat's gonna drop here, but for like other stuff or like um, different rhythms that are in the background and that sort of thing. Did you, when you were studying music theory, did you find anything particularly interesting or like how, how did you go about studying it without sort of like being self-taught? Cause I know it's like, there's a lot of stuff involved in that. And so you can kind of get lost and oh, yeah, all definitely. sorts of different stuff that's the thing it's like it's knowing what you're looking to learn like so me personally like when i'm doing my research i know what i'm looking to learn which mm -hmm. is like in making beats you just need to know like keys chord progressions what type of scales you can use which ones like what kind of song you're making if you're trying to make a happy song do you want to use major chords if you try to make like a sad song use some minor chords like and, and yeah you know and then just understanding like okay, I have this chord progression, what type of top line melody would work? What kind of um, sound selection? Sound selection is another big thing, but what type of sound selection is gonna work? It's, it's, it's more so like knowing what you're looking for when you're researching it, as opposed to like just going in head first. Cause it's like music theory is super, I mean, it's not the same, but it's, it's similar in concept to math. Like mm -hmm. if, if you're if you're trying to learn algebra and you're studying geometry, you're not on the right track. You know what I'm saying? Like music theory has so many different things that you can learn that like you have to know what you want to learn in order to or what you need to learn in order to um, actually do the proper research and to grow. So for me, I just knew like what type of things I wanted to learn. So I did the research on those. Like there's still so much like I, I can't read sheet music. I don't need to read sheet music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not a pianist or something, you know? So, like, I, I just learned, like, basics. And, like, I have an understanding of of a lot of things in it and how it works. But still, there's so many things, like, that I don't know that I'm still trying to learn. Like, I still here, like, being in L.A., I've been using a lot of my time to study more. And I've been learning um, different things, like, like inversions and like different types of um, um, other than like, you know, there's there's major chords, there's minor chords, there's natural minors, harmonic minors, there's Dorian, there's like yeah. so many different types of scales. It's like, it's ridiculous. So it's like, I'm, I've just been oh, diving head first into insane. understanding more. The yeah, it is, of, it's the like- The amount of scales that exist especially imagine like being middle school age and like sitting in class and like being, oh, like learn this scale. You're like, no, I don't wanna learn. It's like, there's so many, yeah. but they're also, mm -hmm, they're all so useful. And you don't realize that like, that is the basis of all music 
it's scales. Yeah, it is. Scales and chords. Like, so yeah. it's so important to know those and like to have a good understanding of those, even just for like electronic beats and different things, they still follow those principles. So it's absolutely it's good on you that you took the energy to learn all that stuff because a lot of a lot of people I think just be like, oh, how hard can it be? Just like say, I want this sound to be here and this sound to be here, and like I make a dubstep. Yeah, and it's no. like, no, it's not. It's not that simple. That's not, like, yeah, like, there's definitely levels be, to it. Yeah, you can't be successful just kind of winging it in that way. You have to sort of, mm -hmm. you know, like you were saying, if you want a happy sound, you use major, sad, or sort of a darker sound. You use a minor chord, different sort of sounds mm -hmm. for for your musics music. Um, yeah. That's cool though. Is there is there a particular sort of um, chord or sort of key that you like to that you like to to stay in that you do most C of minor. your work in C minor? Yeah. When you is that sort of your comfort zone then? And do you venture out really from that at all, or not so much? Oh yeah, absolutely. I do all the time, but like I typically stay with minor chords because I like to make that type of music where it's like I like to tell tell stories and like you know actually rap. Mm -hmm. and and doing so like um that type of like dark feeling or like that type of uh um lo-fi feeling it works mm -hmm. way better with, with like minor chord so i typically stay in minor but usually i start with c minor and then like my sweet spot um for the uh for the bpm um which is like um beats uh, per minute so it's like um the tempo yeah. my tempo is typically 85 which is like a place where i can just sit and talk comfortably mm -hmm. so like like i was telling you about that pocket earlier yeah. it's like a pocket where i can literally just sit and talk and hit right in spot so it's literally like uh um like let's say i'm like you love me the more you say it the less i start to believe it me and you in deep for the better part of four seasons shots and tequila and drinking but i ain't leaving you know what i'm saying like that that like easily easy going like just i'm just talking you know and it just flows like that 85 ppm you put me in a c minor chord i'm snapping yeah that's good that you found like having that knowledge of your comfort spot in your pocket like down to the specifics of like the theory of okay it's at this tempo and this in this scale or chord um mm -hmm. like that's super important because when you go to make a new song you have that starting block already and you're not just starting from scratch yeah. every time. Um, even like, even if like you had a particular sort of beat that you liked and you didn't know that that's why you liked it, to know why and to know, because then you can deviate from that and you know what you're deviating from rather than just being like, oh, I'll try this new thing or I'll try that new thing. And then you're yeah. like, oh, I don't know why it doesn't work. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. That's really cool that you figured that out for sure. Yeah, I had to teach myself like, because at first like I would be able to say, "Oh, I like this more, and I like this," but I didn't know why. Mm -hmm. Like now I, I'm like, I'm breaking down the science of it and saying like, I know, I know why, you know, and like, mm -hmm. and making the beat, and making the beats, you have to know what's gonna work for you, or like, you know, sometimes I make beats and I, I try to send them off and get them to other artists too, you know, like sometimes mm -hmm. I might just be feeling like to make like a trap song. I don't really make trap music, but sometimes I might be in the mood to just make something that's like, oh, you know, this joint hits. Like it would go crazy in the club, even if I'm not going to use it. It's still mm -hmm. fun. So yeah, I'll do stuff like that too, just to get that out of my system. Mm. That's interesting. Yeah, for sure. Um, when you are recording, everything has to be a little bit more precise, I would think. Yeah. But then when you're performing it live, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be as precise. Is that sort of accurate? Because you're going off power yes. more. So when you're recording, yes. you're like counting, like counting the beats and you're like, I have to hit this snare on this word and I have to hit this on this one to make sure like mm -hmm. the song when you produce it is, is accurate. But then when you're performing, does that kind of go out the window a little bit? It does because it doesn't it doesn't because there's going to be breath control is harder whenever you're performing live mm -hmm. so you got to plan pockets where you know you could take a breath so like you might say like the first few words of a line and then not hit the last word or you might say you might miss the first few words of a line and then hit the last words 
or just so you can catch your breath sometimes, but you have to be able to plan it. Like, like let's say like, I know it's a predictable line coming up where people are going to know it. So I'll say the first few, few words and then put the mic out and then let them say the line. So that way I can catch my breath and I can breathe. Or like if I'm out of breath and like, I know like I'm still rapping through a song, like I might, it's about also keeping your composure. You don't want to look like you're dying on stage and like you yeah. can't breathe, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So like, I, I tend to, you know, if you hit the words that are like the punctuation words, which is like um, the ending, like mm -hmm. the ending line. Like, so let's say like I said, you love me the more you say it, the less I start to believe it. So instead of saying that you love me the more, I say, more you say it, the less I start to believe it. You know what I'm saying? Like I say the end so mm -hmm. I can get that breath at the, if you love me, you know, and then I'll, I'll hit the end of the line. How much more difficult is it when you're like kind of bouncing around when you're performing live? like that to like plan way more far, difficult how much time i guess do you spend planning out when you're going to take those breaths when you're like kind of bouncing around on stage well um typically uh i'll practice in you know like in the crib before i like days before before i perform it depends mm -hmm. on the performance like i mean sometimes i have performances that like i know like are going to be way more serious than other ones like mm -hmm. some of them might just do, you know, do them for fun. Like sometimes I might just go to the bar and then like, they will be like, hey, you want to rap? And I'll be like, all right, cool. Or like my, sometimes my friends, they do my open mics at like local events. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm just there to support them. But then, you know, I'll get in the mood and I'll be like, all right, give me the mic. You know, so like, I don't really like rehearse for stuff like that. But like when I do stuff, like I'm performing at like the club or like, um, like uh, uh, echo stage and stuff like that. Like I'll, I'll practice, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'll practice before, beforehand, so that way I get aware. And then you, you, of course, you know you got rehearsal too. So we do rehearsal before our sets. Gotcha. That also depends on the venue because uh, when I did the national, we had rehearsal. But when I do like uh, Bliss in DC and like nightclubs, there's not usually a rehearsal. Right. Is there one, is there, a, is there a sort of a venue or performance type that you enjoy more than the other ones? I like smaller ones because mm -hmm. it's more intimate, you know, mm -hmm. like where it's like, um, it's more, if it's a smaller venue and you know, it's like you're, people are there to hear music, it's more interactive because people are there to hear music. Like if you go to the club and you're performing at the club, people are there to have a good time. They're there to party, you know, they're not necessarily there for, for, uh, you you know and what you got going on but if you do like you know the national is cool too because um it's a bigger crowd but like you can't you can't interact like you know like at face value with everybody right. so like i like i like being able to actually be able to interact at face value with people and you know experience it like sometimes from time to time i would do like local like local venues and events just for like the people who you know live in the city that that can't always get out to like DC or like Richmond or wherever I may be in like New York or something to come see me, so mm -hmm. I'll uh, I'll do like you know like stuff that's fun and then like I'll I'll usually I pay for everybody's ticket too. So like last time I did one, I think I brought like twenty to thirty people with me, and like I paid for everyone's ticket so everyone can get in for free just to you know just for me to show appreciation to like the people who support me. 100%. So. Yeah, so like I like that smaller, like, like personable, and like I like when people are there who actually know my music. Mm -hmm. How much goes into on the bigger ones like you mentioned, Echo Stage and the National? How much goes into that from like a behind the scenes standpoint? You would be surprised, bro. This squirrel is creeping up on me. He's trying to take my life. <laughs> you would be surprised though, like um, you would think oh, these are bigger venues, like, this is professional people, it's gonna be professional. It's not. You learn, like, a lot of things mm -hmm. are just as sloppy on a bigger scale that they are on a smaller scale. Like, I've done local performances that were super sloppy, and I've done the national was, was sloppy. Like, you know, like, it's just a bigger scale, a bigger... Uh, people mm -hmm. look at it differently because they think oh well that's a bigger thing so it's probably you know more professional nah like it was it was pretty sloppy like um they didn't know what you know where what room we're supposed to be in where we're supposed to go what, what what's going to happen you know like after we perform what like it was just a cluster mess of yeah stuff. so 
I would think that would depend on the artist though as well. Like oh yeah, definitely. If, if there's like a huge artist there, they're probably not gonna be sloppy. Yeah, definitely. Like if if like Drake's coming, then like um they're gonna be on their piece and they cues, you know, they're gonna have top flight security. Like the other day I was uh, in the club like um um here in LA. It was my first time out uh, in the club here, mm-hmm. you know, experiencing it from a different perspective because I work in the nightclubs in DC, you know, too. Like I used to promote and stuff. So I'd be around celebrities all the time and like whatnot. But the other day here, uh, Boosie, I don't know if you know who Lil Boosie is. He put up to the club mm-hmm. and like he was in the section next to us. And my man brought like a whole SWAT team with him. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm talking about they was in the club with like, like military grade, like weapons for like Jeez, no reason. Man. But I'm like, what the heck? But that's how it is. Like some people move like when I, when a bigger artists move on a different level than, you know, like other people. Like when I did the national, I think it was a boogie that was, that was there. Mm -hmm. This is a few years back. So like he was, that was when drowning hit. So he was big, but he wasn't like as big as he is now. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. It's a crazy life for sure. What is, um, have you been able to perform out out in LA yet? No, not yet. Right now, like I'm just doing like a lot of behind the scenes work, like meeting people Mm -hmm. and, building my connections and um i'm actually in the process of making new music so i'm working on a project a few projects i'm working on a project right now that's like a short ep and then i'm working on like a a album type project and then um i'm also working on like new content for instagram so i've been working a lot behind the scenes as opposed to you know like showing face a lot out in public you know it's covid Mm -hmm. yeah has it been tough for you to sort of maintain uh, like financially with like without performances and stuff? Or are you still making beats and selling beats and like doing other stuff and like to, you're able to maintain sort of what you're doing without having to like, maybe I need to go get another job type thing? Well, for the most part, most performances um, that I did, I would do either free or you'd have to pay for them. Like sometimes you pay for your, your performance lots. So um, that's another thing that's a, a great topic is to tell artists it's big and it's big and it's important to invest in yourself. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I invested in myself a lot. I had a job for the entire like people who follow me on Instagram, like they know like I used to complain about hating to work all the time and I just want to leave my job and make music full time, which hey, now I'm living my dream. Mm-hmm. But like I worked full time, you know, for like years just to fund everything that I had going on and like that's how I was able um, like I'm super fortunate to be able to make enough money to to grow the way that I did and like support myself the way that I did but um there ha- you know there's some venues where definitely where you make money like smaller venues they pay you you like if I'm trying to do a bigger venue sometimes I have to pay for my slide it all depends it got to a point though you know like when if you know the right people you can do everything for free so yeah, that's true. towards the end right before covid towards the end right before covid where I was doing probably like four shows a week I didn't pay for anything if anything I was getting paid but I was on the right track and then it you know COVID hit and it just threw everything off yeah for sure if you had I did that for a lot of people a lot of people had mm-hmm. like we're about to like break through in some way shape or form and everything just stopped um, yeah but the ones that will make it through with the work ethic they'll be better on the other side for it I would think so um mm-hmm. If you had one piece of advice for sort of either yourself five years ago or for other sort of artists that are looking to get to where you are, one or two pieces, what would it be? Um, consistency is key. That's number one. I think that even myself, I find myself lacking in consistency, but I know like, it's kind of like, all right, let's say you're going to the gym and you're trying to get your summer body and like you're not seeing your results immediately you're not going to see any results until you've been putting in work Mm -hmm. over time like you're you're going to the gym every day and it's been like a week or two weeks and you're like damn like this isn't really this isn't really going how i thought it was going to go i haven't seen nothing you're not going to see results until like a month two months you know like real results so it's a but you're not going to get those results unless you put that work in every single last day so it's about 
putting the work in and seeing the vision, even when the vision isn't right there, like your the results aren't right there, and just mm-hmm. staying consistent and keeping that work, that workflow going. That's definitely number one. Uh, number two, I would say, be yourself and be happy to be yourself. And I know they sound cliche, but it's it's very real. Like I've learned in life that a lot of cliche stuff is so cliche because it's the most basic of real. Like, be yourself. Be happy to be yourself, find yourself, love yourself, and project yourself into your craft, period. 100%. I know the cliche thing is like, I've learned the same. It's like, they're there because it's it's real and you need to do it. Yeah. And like, one thing when you say like, love yourself, it's like, one thing that I tell people often is like, how are you going to love every, love anything else if you can't love yourself? So you got to start with that and then you can love your craft, love like people in your relationships and, and all that mm-hmm. sort of stuff. But that's good advice, man. You've heard it here first. Devante has been it's been an hour, bro. You've got uh oh, yeah. like Uzi out now on, on all platforms. We'll get those links in the description. Um yes, anything else that where where can we find you at on social media? Uh I'm on um on Instagram and uh I think Twitter and Facebook everywhere. Devonte Taimon is my name. D E V O N T E T Y M O N. No spaces or anything. Look me up. Or if you can't find them, just Google me. You can Google me too. Sounds good. You heard it here first. We'll be looking forward for for your new projects this spring, maybe summer time frame. Yes, sir. Uh, and hoping that you can get back out to perform in one of these days. Hopefully, COVID will end. I appreciate your time. And, Thank you. Uh, And yeah, we'll wrap it up there. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me. And I appreciate it. I had a blast. Of course, of course. You're welcome back anytime for sure. I I would love to come back. All right. Bye, everybody. All right.